So, so yeah, the emergency braking was identified, and the driver of the vehicle was not paying attention and didn't didn't brake right. Um, but the person was recognized about six seconds before the crash occurred, which should have been plenty of time to brake. But again, um, you know, this is just one of the incidents. There's many others like this. We just chose this because it happened near Mill Avenue. So next. So, so this is just uh, kind of like an introduction. So pay attention to like this person, how they're like in the frame and then it's not in the frame, right? So, you know, that's just something, uh, and this was, these annotations were created using YOLO V7. Uh, so, you know, that could be some kind of safety specification. If a person is in one frame, they will be in the next frame, right? And, and you can have some constraints where, uh, you know, you deal with occlusion or the beating the frame, but you know that person was just walking across the street and identified that person the one frame, and then the next it didn't, and the next it did, and so um, you know if we could somehow specify safety constraints saying that this person should always be recognized as a person, uh, then you know that could maybe help in cases like the Uber crash. Okay, so I'll give a quick background to what temporal logic is and what some of the operators are. So you have the standard logic operators, and, or, and not. And then they also introduce four new operators. Uh, next, always, eventually, and until. And they are evaluated at each step with respect to the future sequence, so the future uh, values in the signal. So um, next slide. So I'll go over linear temporal logic, which is kind of you know basic uh, where to start with. And you're dealing with discrete time steps and Boolean predicates. Okay, so here like the atoms are A and B, and uh, this first one is the next operator. So you know there are different kind of forms for it. You get next, X, or that O. And so if we say like next B. Okay, so in the next state, B will be true. So this is zero, zero. Here would be one, because again, the next state, and then here would be one. But here it's not zero, or it, here it is zero because the next state isn't B. And then I put a question mark here because we don't really know the, the truth value because we don't know the next state, right? Again, you think at each state, it's evaluated with respect to like the sequence, the future of the sequence, right? Um, the always operator just indicates something will always happen, right? So here, if we do always A, it's zero, right? Because like this B occurs, but at this point, like it could continue A, like from this point onward, it, it just could be A, and so then always will hold like true after this point. Uh, then finally, or it's also referred to as like eventually, just means like eventually something will happen, right? Kind of kind of the inverse of always. And so if we do eventually B, well, eventually B happened. But here, this step again, we don't know if eventually another B will happen. Okay, so uh, if we go to the next one, um, until is set is so it's like a binary operator. We have A until B. This is saying like A will occur until B happens then only B will occur, okay? So first three steps are saying A is occurring and then B occurs, but it's false. The reason is, is because it switches back to A, okay? So, you know, if we have, uh, if this would still be, then all of these would be true, but the until operator didn't hold true again because like A happened, B happened, and then it switched back to A. So until says A will happen until B, and then only B will happen. Yeah. So in this case, it's the future values and then determines the value of Right. So when you're like verifying the specification, you already have uh, like the whole series of information. You, know, you run an experiment, you have one through N, and then you can verify the model. Okay. So now, uh, metric temporal logic or MTL. So now you're dealing with continuous time and still dealing with Boolean predicates. 
Okay, so the advantage of this is you can specify, um, you know, a range of time values. Okay, so, you know, this is always from time 1.25 to 2, A will be true. Okay, so this is, you know, more useful. You can specify things, um, you know, yeah, if you're driving from one frame to the next, um, or, you know, while the stoplight is red, you know, during this time the stoplight is red, you will always stop. Something like that is, is how this would be used. And signal temporal logic is combining that where you're dealing with continuous time and now you're dealing with real value predicates. Okay, so again, we do this eventually from time zero to five, A will have a value greater than one. Okay, so uh, you can also use this for like speed. If you want to limit a speed constraint, say you're on like a 45 mile an hour road, always from this time to this time, your speed will be less than where the speed is, All right? So um, yeah, continuous real values, or continuous time and continuous uh, predicates as well. Okay, so this is kind of an example. So I did uh, MTL here. So Boolean predicates, continuous time, uh, just to make it a little bit easier. But so we'll evaluate uh, next. Okay, so we're saying, at, like I'm, this is at time 0 0.5 and the next state a is going to be true so that would be uh, you know, the next state a is true and at first when i read this i was like okay with continuous value time it's like how do you know the next state right there's no real like next number if you're getting the real numbers but really it's whatever like rate you're capturing the data at right you'll have a series of uh like state observations and predicates and it's basically at whatever like interval that was sampled um always at um one two two this is supposed to be like a comma sorry um a will hold true okay so yeah we don't care what happens here uh but from one to two a will be true okay and then eventually from 0.5 to 1.5 a will be true so we see right here, like once A is true, like we don't really care, or those can be whatever, right? Uh, even though it's within this time frame, because it's just saying it eventually, like well, at least once this will happen, right? And A until B. So from 0.25 to 2.5. So we start at A, and then once we switch to B, like only B will hold true. Uh, so that's just an example using uh, MTL, and then again, STL, instead of just saying A true and B A is greater than whatever, and then you would have, you know, the real values for each predicate. Um, so next, Devondra is gonna go over uh, verification. I have a question. Yeah. So you go back uh, this stage actually. So for the eventually the F operator, uh, I know that uh, the time set 0 0.5, it doesn't have to be A. The A ha doesn't have to be true, but why not 1.5? Times that because eventually uh, it matters at the end time, right? So when you're specifying this, it's saying like eventually this will happen like at least once. So once this has happened, then it can go back to being whatever, right? So it's equivalent of saying at least happen once in this time interval, right? Yeah, at least once. So yeah, it could continue happening, but um, you're just saying at least once at any step. Yeah. Gotcha. 